I love Star Wars. I love the films, apart from the sequels. I love the games, I collect Lego, posters, and apparently I even spend my money on this. So when the Battlefront Classic Collection was announced for March 14th, as you can imagine, I was very excited. I already owned the old Battlefront games and I played them a bit, but as a kid, I always played Lego Star Wars instead. This re-release gave me the perfect chance to experience these games on the PS5 and get the Platinum Trophy in this game. But there is one big problem. The trophy list in this game is utter trash. Which is ironic, considering in the blog post they bragged about how their favourite trophy is defeating a Jedi by knocking them off the map. My brother in Christ, that is one of only two miscellaneous trophies in the entire game. Anyway, more on that later, a good place to start with is Battlefront 1. Battlefront 1 only has four trophies from the game's total of 45. And essentially, it boils down to beating both the Clone Wars and the Galactic Civil War campaigns. Both campaigns take you through iconic locations and battles from each of the respective trilogies. We begin at the start of the franchise at the Battle of Naboo, where we play as the droid army taking out the Gungans from the end of the first film. There is no tutorial for this game, but this was an easy way to get used to the controls. Travelling back in time to the start of the film, we assault the city of Feed. And then it's over to the Wookiees on Kashyyyk. And if you couldn't tell by now, this game doesn't really have any cohesive story. It's essentially just defeat 200 of the enemies before they defeat 200 of your friendly forces. I can imagine for the time on release, playing these iconic locations was impressive, especially with the ability to get into starships and tanks. In some ways, it is still the definitive way to play some of these locations. That is, the ones that are not included in the new Battlefront games. Anyway, halfway through, we switch teams to the clones and play on one of my favourite of all the maps, Kamino. The level design on this one really felt a level above. Then we're over to Renvar, which as a huge Star Wars fan, I've never heard of. It seems a lot like Hoth, but with a different name. This brings us back to Kashyyyk towards the end of the trilogy of films, and this is the first level I failed and struggled on, taking a couple of tries. We got fucked there. We got absolutely cooked and there was nothing I could do about it. Eventually, with both forces depleted, we take down the last droid and earn the first trophy. One campaign completed and only one trophy. It's not looking good. With the Clone Wars finished, it's over to the original trilogy, and I definitely preferred the level design of these missions far more. Tatooine is up first and allows us to take control of a TIE fighter, but I quickly realise I'm not very good at flying in this game, so I cinematically bail. Staying on Tatooine, but moving over to Mos Eisley, and we're accompanied by Darth Vader, who absolutely massacres everyone. Hello, Darth. <laughs> Me and Darth are capturing the outpost together. Look at that. There's another mission in Renvar. Oh, they're so gone. They're so done. We're going to get a last kill here. There is victory. Then one of my personal favourites on Yavin. Oh my god, this is insane. The amount of grenades going on. <laughs> Yeah, they're finished anyway. Before switching over to the Rebels. Which takes us to the iconic Hoth battle from the start of The Empire Strikes Back. In this mission, we can actually earn a miscellaneous trophy for doing something other than just playing the game. Hallelujah. Remember how I said I'm bad at flying? Yeah, that's going to be a problem here. I need to get into the snowspeeder and wrap the tow cable around the Yatat's feet to take it down just like in the movies. In the GameCube game Rogue Leader, I was a pro at this, but in this game, I kind of just sucked. I didn't realise that in order to successfully do this, I was supposed to let another AI member in. And when a Wookiee jumped in, it had a hilarious result. Look at this dude. <laughs> Eventually, I figured out that I didn't have to shoot myself. I could let the AI shoot. All I had to do was fly. And eventually, this happened. Coming around Rogue Leader. That took so many attempts. Right, now we can actually do the mission. We're getting battered. From here, the rest of the single player was straightforward. We're on best spin. They're so finished. This gun is like ridiculously overpowered. Then Endor. And then finished. And this leaves only one trophy left on Battlefront 1, and that's Execute Order 66 for defeating a Jedi hero by knocking them off the map. John killed Count Dooku. He fell off the edge. Surely that's it. In concept, this sounds like a fun trophy, but the truth is, it sucks ass. Come on, that's gotta be it. John killed Count Dooku. Is it because he's a Sith and not a Jedi? Okay. I mean, surely that's it. Where's the trophy? What do you mean? I definitely knocked Count Dooku and Luke off the platform multiple times. 
I mean, once again, he's fallen off. And it says in the bottom right, John killed Luke Skywalker. Where is the trophy? And eventually, without even knocking Luke off and dying in the process, this happened. Oh, execute order 66. The one time I didn't shoot, I've got it. Okay, well, terrible trophy. Terribly designed, but we've got it. Cool. Quite a few people on the forums reported that the same thing is happening to them. So if you are struggling with this, just keep going and eventually it might pop. With Battlefront 1 finished, it's time to move on to Battlefront 2. And I loved the campaign for Battlefront 2. It's narrated by the legend himself, Tamura Morrison. Ah, the Polynesian spy. As the accounts of the 501st Legion from the Clone Wars up to the Empire are documented. Technically, I believe the story is non-canon, but you can still take elements from it and enjoy it for what it is. Beginning in the tutorial, it's a far cry from Battlefront 1 regarding trophies. They just pop every two seconds for doing different things. So how do they work? Well, there are nine different medal types. Frenzy, Regulator, Demolition, Marksman, Gunslinger, Technician, Endurance, Guardian, and finally, War Hero. Some of them relate to getting a certain amount of kills or critical hits with a gun, and others are for getting a certain amount of score points. These medals can only be earned once per life, but even that can be glitchy at times. So just from the tutorial on Geonosis, they had started coming through quickly, just by using different weapons. New to this game are mission objectives, such as go to this point, defend this location, pick up this thing, and destroy this object. These simple additions go a long way for making the experience far more enjoyable to play. Quick disclaimer, on launch night at midnight, I did play online and it was just a laggy mess. I did have one enjoyable game, which finished in about two minutes and no trophies were earned. So all the trophies had to be earned offline for me. The campaign in Battlefront 2 is called Rise of the Empire, predominantly taking place from Attack of the Clones all the way up to the Empire Strikes Back. The first proper mission takes place on my Gito with Key Adi Mundi. It's a cool battle with the mission objectives I described previously being a nice change and some medal trophies. New to Battlefront 2 is the flying missions, which you may recognize from some of the gameplay of Online and Galactic Conquest. This one teaches us how to board an enemy ship, eventually. There it is. And take it down from the inside out. Next up is Felucia, with Aayla Secura taking out this annoying prick from the Attack of the Clones Colosseum. And then it's back to Kashyyyk. This time, however, it's much more enjoyable than Battlefront 1. Unfortunately, on Utapau, we'd run into some problems. Oh no. I don't think I'm meant to have a green screen right now. Yeah. This game actually completely crashed and shut down my PS5. Immediately after turning it on, there was an update file, which would not let me start the game until it was done. Once I did load it up, my profile was corrupted as well. Are you joking me? Oh my fucking god. I've seen issues of this also happening on the same mission, so one thing to be wary of is to just save your game after every mission, just in case. With Utapau finally finished, we're onto one of my favourite moments in all of Star Wars. Anakin and the 501st Assault on the Jedi Temple. They even put the kids in. Oh god. This level was actually quite tricky, and I started to focus on using different classes to shorten the medal grind towards the end. It didn't help. Eventually, however, you take control of Anakin, and, well, it didn't go very well. Oh my god, Anakin got sent. This mission took me a couple of tries. It was at this moment that he knew. Oh my god. <laughs> All three of them just came at me there. But eventually it was done, and we move on to the time of the Empire. There's a very cool mission on the Death Star, and another map that will come back to later for some trophies. Before moving on to the Tentative 4, and the assault on Yavin 4, after the first Death Star is destroyed. Similar to Battlefront 1, the game finishes with the Battle of Hoth once again. This time, however, we're fighting on the other side. And after destroying the shield generator and massacring the rebels, Astar Vader, we're finished with the Battlefront 2 campaign. I absolutely loved the campaign, but unfortunately, regarding the Platinum, it was all downhill from here. I still had 23 trophies to get and a lot of grinding ahead of me. I went back to the tutorial to work on one of the medals I had earned none of during the campaign. For the demolition medals, you need to get four critical hits with a rocket launcher. And the forms guided me to hit in between where the legs and the body connect on these spider droids. So I locked in 
and three hours later had 64 of the demolition medals, along with some other medals. There it is, unlock the remote rocket launcher. I also did the same for technician by slicing the droids. Jesus Christ. Until all I had to do was weapon kills and score streak medals. I was informed by a Mr. Riferino to play Conquest on Polis Massa with teams of 32, and this worked a treat. So for a few more hours of grinding, we got the last medals needed for the Platinum. This included the Sniper Rifle, the Pistol, the Assault Rifle, and finally, Guardian and War Hero. There it is. War Hero 64 times, unlock the increased damage bonus, and Martial Commander. It's a bit of a crap way to end the game, I'm not gonna lie. But with that being said, it's the end of the video. So if you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and click on the screen for another video by me.